Now this next festival is a bona fide trailblazer when it comes to being both nationally and internationally recognised. Now in its 25th year, the Melbourne Queer Film Festival is the oldest Australian and global queer film festival, as well as being the second largest film festival right here in Victoria. With an estimated 245,000 people set to attend, it's this kind of support which allows this particular festival to have great sponsorships and partnerships including its principal partners the Melbourne City Council. Now we have seen this festival grow from its former home at the historical St Kilda Astor Theatre to its current home at the ACMI Cinemas in Fed Square. So let's go see what all the fuss is about. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Now, how was this festival first developed and how has it changed from its initiation right. through to now? I've been on board for 17 years, but wow. from what I know of the, of the history of the festival, uh, so it started 25 years ago, it started in the back of the Hares and Hainers bookstore, which was then in Paran, but is now in Collingwood. Okay. Um, just a volunteer group of people that got together and got some films from overseas and it sort of grew a bit from there and mm. eventually um, became a more professional sort of outfit. Uh, people started getting paid rather than volunteering yeah. and uh, here we are today with a you know, 100 session festival over wow. 12 days. And why do you think that this one's so successful in comparison to others of the same kind of nature? Yeah, look, I think we have a really supportive audience in Melbourne. I mean, mm. Melbourne's full of film festivals, so people yeah. kind of get film festivals. They like film festivals. Uh, there's barely a week goes by without a film festival yeah. of some sort in Melbourne. So, and <laughs> sometimes there's two or three going at once. So, yeah. um, look, we're pretty savvy about film festivals. We're a real arts city, so... Mm -hmm. Um, I just think the increase in sort of organised, you know, just a more professional organisation, um, mm -hmm. uh, being surrounded by good people, getting good boards together, um, yeah. professionalising the image of the festival, making the branding look good and all that sort of stuff, and just getting great films. Like it was, you know, when I first started 16 years ago, and certainly when the festival started 25 years ago, mm -hmm. the amount of good quality films was pretty small, like it was pretty mm -hmm. thin on the ground. Being yeah. a niche festival, there's a finite number of films that you can get. What are the categories for the, for the actual like films themselves and yeah. the like, prerequisites to enter into the festival? Yep, so look, we screen features, shorts, documentaries uh, of all sorts, experimental works, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and across the whole gamut of genres like, you know, comedy, horror, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, to get into the festival, you, you, the film has to have some kind of queer sensibility, and I know that sounds pretty vague, but it has to have uh, some sort of queer theme either a major character or mm -hmm. you know the actual story has to be queer themed I mean mm -hmm. it's it's not good enough to sort of have a straight love story with uh, you know a taxi driver who happens to be gay like it's, yeah it has to be a major component of the, yeah, it, has to, it has to be a major component of the of the actual narrative right so that's probably the the best way best to, way to get it yeah. describe it yeah. fantastic well through the films that are showcased how do you feel that this festival has educated the wider community in say for the benefit of social change? Yeah, I think, look, queer film festivals are really important the world over, but and, and none more than say in parts of the world where being queer is still illegal. Mm. I mean, we still have a way to go here in terms of equality, in terms of equal marriage and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, look, it's really important. Obviously, it's a, at being a niche film festival, it caters to a queer audience, but mm. I mean, we just put it together a, a great film festival and we hope that people are just like film come and see it. Well, fantastic. And one final question for you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, where do you uh, feel that Australian cinema is progressing in the near future? Um, certainly in terms of Australian queer cinema, it seems to be coming a long way very quickly. A queer feature film was pretty rare. Like, yeah. we, probably in the first 12 years we had one or two. Yep. Um, yep. Last year we had three or four. The year before that we had a couple. This year we've got four. And they're very strong films. So, wow. You know, and I know there's some in the pipeline, there's a couple that are coming up that uh, are reasonably big budget that have got good support from Film Australia and, and uh, sorry, Screen Australia and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So, you know, I'm really positive about the, the, the way going forward and I think there's some really talented people out there. So I'm feeling really positive. The four films that we've got this year are, are fantastic films, really polished, some of them with international distribution already. So I'm feeling really positive. I think it's going to be really exciting over the next few years for, for both queer cinema and, and hopefully Australian cinema in general. Fantastic. Well, Lisa, thank you for your time today. No worries. Cheers. Thank you.